So the beginning of the uh, presentation here starts with what we're going to be talking about tonight, and that is how to be a great production assistant. Um, definitely something that is uh, the start of a career for many of us. Um, many of us maybe probably got started in other ways and uh, found this is a great way to get onto the paid gigs and um, move our way up into the passions that we have. Um, and so tonight is going to be all about that how to be a great production assistant. And don't feel left out. Uh, for those of you who don't necessarily know what the definition of that is, we'll be going over all of it. Um, I'll also let you know that uh, in writing the um, presentation out, um, I know it, it's got a lot of text on the screen. Um, I like to go ahead and just read off the screen. Hopefully everybody's all right with that. Um, I might go off uh, off script here, but uh, for the most part, don't feel like you have to uh, try to read while I'm talking. I'll definitely read what's on the screen so you can follow along and make sure nobody gets left behind. Um, and with that, I'll go ahead and jump into our next slide here. Maybe. There we go. Uh, and this is just a little bit about me. You can see uh, some IMDB credits that I have over on the side here. Um, and just letting you know that I am at this current stage in my career, a cinematographer and a camera operator, um, also known as a director of photography is another term for cinematographer. Um, that's what I do. I love it. I enjoy it so much. I get to work with so many great directors and producers and crew of all sorts. Um, and I do that everything from narrative. So short films, features, proof of concepts, pilots, TV shows, uh, all the way over to the commercial space um, and even diving into the videography world, um, which is a great place as well for many uh, to start off. Um, a little bit more about me. I did start out as an actor, uh, did it in high school and a little earlier than that and fell in love with it. Uh, moved to LA in 2011 uh, to study it professionally. Um, and it was there that I got my first opportunity uh, to be a PA. It was actually for my um, acting coach at the time. And um, it was an awesome experience. And I, I really didn't know that that position even existed. Uh, so I, you know, sought very uh, quickly after how I could get my hands on more opportunities like that. Um, and soon ended up back home where I, I began the pursuit of uh, being a PA on film sets and things like that. Uh, but I, I did find that there was some difficulty in learning, you know, everything that you need to learn about the filmmaking process on a set. Uh, and so I did decide in 2014 to go to full sale, see if I could learn the language a little bit quicker, uh, you know, learn the lingo, see what things looked like, uh, figure out how difficult it was, um, and to give my parents definitely some reassurance of, uh, you know, having some income, because we all know the acting world is uh, equally tough. Um, I did graduate in 2016, and I've worked on a multitude of productions since then, um, which are listed, like I said, down below um, and off to the side. Uh, but really, I, I even up to this year haven't you know stopped being a PA on productions when I can. Always something to learn, always a, a ladder to climb. So um, you know, whenever uh, whenever there's a good gig to come about, I'm, I'm despite being a cinematographer, will not hesitate to jump on as a PA. Uh, and I encourage everyone to, to kind of have that mentality. You know, there's, there's always something to learn um, and each set will teach you something. So no matter what role you're in, jump on it and uh, give it a go. So on to our next slide. Uh, what is a production assistant, also known as a PA? Uh, most people assume that a PA or PAs are gophers. Go for water, go for food, go for dry cleaning. And while that is partially true, it is only a small part of the job. PAs are an invaluable asset to the set. PAs are in charge of extras, paperwork, crowd control, and many more things that come up throughout the workday. Um, and that is from Getting It Done, The Ultimate Production Assistant Guide. It's a fantastic book. Highly recommend it. Uh, it's a, even a great place for filmmakers wanting to uh, quickly move into other positions. It really is a great crash course on filmmaking as a whole. Um, there's also uh, usually another book that floats around out there on how to be a production assistant. And um, it's a little white book and it, it's very good as well. Uh, I think this one's probably a little newer and um, uh, certainly a good place to start. 
but just as the definition I, I posted here kind of describes, uh, a PA is an assistant uh, for the production, uh, and your, your job is to do a lot of the tasks that come about uh, on a set. So, and to kind of get into you know, everything we're going to talk about tonight. I don't mean to insult those of us who uh, who are a little bit more advanced in the process, but um, I'm going to kind of give a quick breakdown. Uh, and that is looking at the screen in front of you a little bit about the business. So up at the top, we have the producer, and that is the person who is in charge of the entire production. Uh, then you have the creative team, and that's not to say that the other side isn't creative, um, but they are the ones that are in charge of the vision for the film. And so uh, it is their visual uh, creativity, I should say, uh, that we end up seeing or audio uh, as in the case of the sound mixer. And that creative team is the director, the director of photographer or photography, uh, also known as a cinematographer, the production designer, the sound mixer and talent. On the other side, you have those who are beyond important uh, to getting a film made uh, and that is the production manager, the first assistant director, locations manager, transportation, and catering. Um, it, it's really two parts. You know, you have the painter, uh, you know, getting the image out on the canvas, um, but without the proper lighting and the paint and all those other tools coming together so that they can actually work with all the, the colors uh, on the canvas. Um, that's, that's your management team that you cannot make a film without them. So that's a little bit about the biz. The last thing I'll do is I'll leave this up just to kind of let you know that every single uh, position that you see up there uh, is definitely a position that could require a PA. Um, certainly the producer might have a PA. Uh, you know, the director could have a PA. Director of photography uh, will probably have a PA on the uh, camera side, most likely not on the electrical uh, side, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, production designers, certainly art PAs, sound mixers may have somebody running, you know, something for them, uh, and talent bringing people to and from set, uh, assisting the transportation, which is over on the right-hand side. Uh, production managers, where you usually find your office PAs, first assistant director, definitely will have a team running around, locking up set, uh, locations, making sure that, you know, everybody is uh, respecting the area and of course catering. Um, and, you know, the other thing too, is we look at this and really PAs can be on a wide ranging um, uh, types of different productions, everything from no budget to the largest budgets you can find, PAs are crucial on any single one of those uh, sets. And why is a PA important? And what shouldn't a PA do? Well, PA is important because it aids the production. Um, quick story is, you know, you'll, you'll have a, a DP who might be setting up a shot and he's really thirsty. It's out in the Florida heat. Um, and if they go running off to get their own water, then it takes time uh, from them working on the set and getting things ready for the whole crew and the whole team. Uh, and so that's something a PA can do is fetch that water uh, and it's incredibly, incredibly important. So that's just an example of how important. Um, they are also uh, important in the way of crew safety, such as lockups, comfort and enjoyability to ensure that the crew is hydrated and having a good time, um, communication, passing information to the crew without screaming and uh, becoming a very chaotic, disruptive set, assisting talent, bringing them to and from set, and keeping organized, assisting with load-ins and load-outs. And we'll get into that a little bit as well, because there are some parts of load-ins and load-outs um, that a PA shouldn't do. And that's what we'll get into right now. So some things that a PA shouldn't do, and given I know we talked about how there are varying uh, production sizes from no budget to indie to large budget, and PAs can fill various roles there. But for the sake of safety, a PA really shouldn't be a grip or electric. Um, you know, that, that something that should be left to a grip or electric uh, to ensure that the safe is set. Real small projects, they may ask you to help out, uh, but for the most part, um, a grip or electric is, is for that position and they want you to be an assistant. Uh, also, don't be a production designer. You may be an art PA, but the reason you don't wanna be a production designer is 
unless you're asked, don't touch the, the set. Uh, you can actually mess with continuity in that regard. Uh, and so it's better safe than sorry uh, to just, you know, kind of listen to what's needed and, and not try to take charge of anything. Uh, also, don't be a camera operator. Uh, as, as much as we'd love to have you asking questions and being by our side and giving us a hand, um, you know, we just don't want anything to happen. And, you know, it kind of fall on you. That equipment's very expensive. And so we just want to play it safe. Uh, also, don't be a director or a first AD. It's best that uh, no matter what your skill level is, uh, that you don't give orders uh, or advice. Um, and then lastly, don't come in with a bad mood or uh, an ego, everybody stay positive. All right, yes, and I see that uh, someone has a question about um, how to become a PA, I will be addressing that. And certainly if I don't get around to the specific question you have, let me know, I'll be glad to um, get that at the very end. Um, all righty, how to properly PA and how to behave on set. Uh, and again, I know this is a lot of text, so bear with me. I'm going to be reading it along with you word for word. Uh, so if you want to take notes, you certainly can, but don't, uh, don't fret. You won't have to read this while I'm talking. We'll be doing it at the same time. So to begin, the number one thing you'll hear about set life is that it's all hurry up and wait, which means it's important for a PA to be quick, but keep in mind safety first and be patient. Don't be constantly coming up to crew and asking, how can I help? What can I do? While that is a very great intent and great attitude, that can disrupt someone's internal thought process or becoming annoying. The best way for you to exhibit the eagerness is to complete a task and return. Stand near to the crew you're assisting, but not in the way, and be constantly visible that if a crew member needs something, they know right where to find you. And don't feel like you're doing a bad job if no one's asking you to do something. Don't go wander off. Stay put and be patient. Another thing is don't fake it until you make it. You know, that's something that everybody uh, hears quite often, but if, if you don't understand something, ask. Yes, sets can be frustrating and crew can become frustrated, but that doesn't give anyone a right to mistreat you. Don't fall to peer pressure or guilt if you don't know something. Don't go try to figure it out. Uh, ask how to do it before you say, okay. Um, and remember, a PA is an assistant. You aren't being hired for more than that. Uh, being will, unless asked, being willing and eager to help can become an invaluable and incredibly memorable uh, to the right people. So don't ever lose hope. Go be uh, that PA that they cannot live without. And to expand upon everything there, um, again, different sizes of, of crews can mean different things. But ultimately, uh, you know, you're, you're coming in as an assistant. Uh, and it, it does fall on you to be the best assistant you can be if, if people are taking advantage of you. Just be knowledgeable that it could be that production and the next one that you might be on uh, could favor you a lot better. Uh, don't let one instance get you down. Uh, every crew I've ever been on, no matter what position I'm in, it's always run differently. Um, and so, you know, just keep that in mind. Uh, if you do end up having a, a problem, if there's an issue, bring it up to your first AD bring it up uh, to whoever is the next person on the hierarchical chain for you. So, and move into the next. Terms and phrases that you'll hear on set. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and read these all off just real quick, and then I'll actually go back and kind of give you a little bit about each one. So, Apple Box, C47, C Stand, Call Sheet, Extra, Gaffer's Tape, Striking eyes, going hot, going live, wrap, that's a wrap. Copy, 10-4, 10-1, 10-100. Brick, they're hot, hot set, slate, first team, second team. Lock up, lock it up, break it down. I need a runner. Last looks, rehearsals up, back to one. Bogey, bogey on set, cue, queuing. Mark, tape, tape it, give them their mark. Flying in, points, kill it, kill that. Rolling, standby, what's your 20? Cut, settle, fire watch, turn around, room tone, stand in, Hollywood it. Shot, roll it back, play it back. This is for picture. And that is a lot of different things that you can hear on set, probably that quick. And the reason I did that is because don't feel overwhelmed if you hear things shouted out like that. Um, you'll hear it all the time. And even someone who's been on a lot of sets will still go, what did they just say, 10-1 or 10-4? Or um, so now let's go back and, and kind of give you a little bit about each one of these. 
um, to kind of break it down and give you some direction as to what these things are. So starting with an apple box is a, a wooden box that most often is used to stand uh, a talent on or to raise something in a seam to elevate it. Um, many of the times it's just to raise and elevation something on the set that's needed. A C47, uh, you'll hear this a lot and there's a really fun story. I guarantee you'll enjoy if you go look it up. I won't spoil it for you on why they're called C47s, but uh, they're just clothespins. Uh, it's the technical way of, of saying it on set and um, you'll, you'll get to enjoy that story as to why. If, if you can't find it, I'll answer the questions at the end. So a C stand is also a uh, particular stand in which you can use to hold up uh, different lights, different lighting equipment. Um, and it's something definitely, it's big shiny object most of the time to keep an eye out for so that you don't trip uh, and don't stumble over those. They'll be most likely all over your sets. Uh, a call sheet is what gives you the directions as to what time you should arrive on set, where the location is, the nearest hospital, uh, what your job duty is, how to get in touch with uh, important people. Um, and that is something that even as a PA, uh, you will be on the lookout for. Uh, that's gonna be all your information. What is an extra? An extra is just like a, a actor or an actress, uh, except that they don't have lines. Uh, if they do, they're called a bit character. The extra might be given one, but for the most part, extras are your background talent. They're the ones acting in the background, not making any noise unless instructed to do so. Uh, gaffer's tape. Uh, while a lot of us know what duct tape is, gaffer's tape is the professional tape to use on a set. Um, and uh, it just uh, kind of helps to keep it from uh, leaving, you know, bad residue on a lot of uh, sets so that cleanup is tidier and neater. Uh, you'll also hear striking eyes going hot, going live. If you hear this, most likely someone's about to turn on a light and they don't want to blind you. Uh, so the best thing that you can do is kind of freeze safely where you're at, keep your eyes down. You see a little glow, you know what's come on, don't rush too quickly. Uh, there might be a delay in that light coming on, or at the very least, it didn't start up right away and they're trying to figure it out and someone may forget to call going hot, eye striking again. Wrap, that's a wrap, means it's the end of the production and or the end of the day. Uh, you might also hear, uh, you know, a sp specific person is wrapped, uh, meaning that they're all done, um, used again very differently on every set, but ultimately meaning it's the end of production. Uh, copy or 10-4. If you're on a production and it's using walkies, uh, you'll hear copy or 10-4 as the response. Um, hey there, I'm live. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, copy or 10-4 is, uh, is indicating that you have received the order over walkie and that you're responding uh, to that. Uh, you'll also hear 10-1 or 10-100, and that is the respectful way of saying I'm going to the bathroom. Uh, you might also hear someone say I need a brick, uh, and that's actually calling for a battery. Uh, they're hot. Uh, I, I wanted to actually put this one in there, very importantly. You may hear uh, either the gaffer or the DP or the director saying that about a talent. Uh, they're not hitting on them. Uh, when they say they're hot, they're most likely talking about the fact that the source of light is too bright on the subject and they need to darken it or flag it off or do, you know, diffuse it, do something to bring it down. So just another uh, thoughtful thing to add there. Oh, what is a hot set? A hot set uh, could mean that you're breaking for lunch or you're leaving the location, uh, but returning to it and letting everyone know not to touch a thing uh, because it is hot, you'll be coming back. Uh, slate, that is the thing or marker uh, that we hold up in front of the camera to indicate what scene we're on, what take we're on, uh, makes a nice loud noise, uh, unless you're in front of talent and you call for soft sticks. Uh, but that just indicates, um, you know, how to sync the vi visuals up with the audio. Uh, you'll also hear first team and second team. And a first team is uh, your main talent. Uh, second team is your background extras. Lock up or lock it up uh, means that the set is ready to go ahead and uh, become live. We're gonna roll this take um, and we need to make sure that nobody uh, outside of the production is walking on, um, that it's, it's locked up and safe and ready to go. Uh, break it down, I'm sure you can imagine, but that means that we're gonna go ahead and uh, stop uh, using a piece of equipment. Uh, we're done with it, we can get rid of it. Um, of course, those terms as well, you'll hear all the time. That's not necessarily for 
you to go ahead and do unless instructed to do so. Uh, usually when you hear that though, that just means something's coming down. So be aware of your surroundings. We're, we're getting rid of something. Uh, I need a runner. That's a cue for a PA. Uh, even though they aren't saying I need a PA, if you do hear I need a runner, that very well could be you. Uh, just make sure that you are in their visual line of sight so that as they're looking around, maybe raise a hand, they know you can be that runner uh, unless instructed to do something else uh, to go help them. Last looks. Last looks is usually a term for the director and for makeup. Uh, also the production designer, to make sure that everything looks good as seen on camera. Uh, we're about ready to go. And so this is the last opportunity to change anything up. Uh, rehearsals up. Rehearsals up can be a cue that maybe we're not recording on this take. Uh, we're just rehearsing, but we want to treat it the same way we would if we were rehearsal uh, or rolling so that we will say rehearsals up uh, so people know what is going on. You'll also hear back to one. And that just means that at the end of a take, if we need to do it again uh, or a rehearsal, we want everyone to go back to the, the uh, beginning of the take as they were originally instructed. Make sure you know what was going on. We're gonna do it all again from the top and those uh, very specific uh, actions and blocking uh, cues need to go all back to one. Uh, bogey or bogey on set. Uh, could be if you're outside, uh, it's always possible someone sees you know, what's going on. They wanna come inquire about what you're filming. A uh, little joke that you can tell them is you're filming a mayonnaise commercial that usually gets people disinterested pretty quick. Um, but a bogey is something that is coming into set uh, that really shouldn't be there. Bogies can also be birds that are in set. Bogies can just be anything that's getting in the way of the set that's really not supposed to be there. Cue or cueing, I could also add blocking there. Uh, but a cue is when you're getting give someone a, a specific uh, action as to when uh, another action is supposed to occur, whether by the camera or by the talent. Um, you could cue the talent that on second action is when they go, or cue the camera when a talent hits a certain mark is when the uh, camera is supposed to move. Uh, you may also see mark, tape it, give them their mark. And most of the time that's giving direction to talent as to where they're supposed to stand at what certain time. Uh, sometimes there's a little tape putting on, put on the ground, maybe a sandbag. Um, but giving instruction as to what the talent is supposed to do. Another really important thing as a PA for you to keep an ear out to is flying in or points. That means something is being brought into set uh, and you really got to watch yourself, make sure that um, you know, you're, you're handling the set with safety measures in place uh, because that could really hurt you get knocked in the back of the head with a, a large pole. Uh, kill it or kill that does not mean that we're going to perform a murder on the on the production or on the set. Uh, it just means that, hey, maybe we don't need that light on anymore. You could go ahead and turn it off, aka go ahead and kill it. Uh, rolling. Uh, rolling, you'll either hear, and again, I've been on many sets. It might not be the proper way to do it, uh, but I've heard audio say rolling. I've heard camera say rolling. I've heard many things, but rolling just means um, that we are going to going ahead and take uh, footage uh, of this specific scene uh, and audio and we're gonna we're gonna roll on this one we're gonna actually see in camera on uh, the memory cards what's going on in front of the lens stand by stand by uh, is another great thing for PAs to listen out to um, it kind of just means freeze in place hold we're, we're getting ready to do something um, you know just kind of stay put where you're at we may need you maybe given instructions soon um, but you know don't go anywhere uh, we'll be We'll be going here shortly. What's your 20? Usually you'll hear that over a, um, uh, over a walkie talkie. That's trying to figure out where's your location. Uh, you may also hear something like, what's the 20 on the director of photography? Uh, and that just means somebody's trying to figure out where they're at. Uh, we don't want everybody jumping on to the you know, walkie talkies and screaming, we found them, we found them, we found them. Um, but uh, certainly if you don't hear in a, an amount of time, anybody say something, uh, and you do have eyes on that person, uh, you can say, hey, uh, I've got uh, 20 on the director of photography over at the uh, craft station um, or wherever they're at on set. Uh, of course, many of us have heard cut. That means that we're done with that take. Uh, the cameras are gonna be stopping. Um, but something good to know is when you hear cut, don't go ahead and start moving right away. Don't jump to the next task. Don't um, do anything more. Uh, because you'll still want to find out from camera team whether that was a good take, uh, from audio, whether that was a clean take, 
Uh, and so cut just means we're at the end of the take, but um, hold steady still for a little bit. Uh, settle usually happens before uh, you roll the camera and the, and the audio. Uh, could just mean that it's getting loud, there's motion going on, something that's trying to kind of relax and calm the whole set. Um, another big thing for PA is what is fire watch? Fire watch means that during lunch, the set might be left uh, and we need a PA to sit on set and make sure you know no intruders, no bogeys come onto the set, that nobody's messing with anything during the set unless you know told to. We're, we're kind of leaving things as they are, uh, camera equipment set up somewhere on standby and we need someone to keep an eye on it. Doesn't mean that a fire is actually gonna start, uh, but it very well could mean that we need somebody on set with all the lights if they're left on uh, to ensure that fire does indeed not break out. Uh, what is a turnaround? Again, a turnaround uh, can be, can refer in a variety of different ways. I've heard it on different sets called used for different things. Um, a turnaround can mean anything from, hey, you know, we're we're coming back at the end of uh, uh, at the end of the day is done. We're coming back tomorrow. It's our turnaround. Uh, it can be you know referencing a shot. It can be referencing um, you know a specific take. Um, but just be aware that turnaround uh, means that kind of we're coming back to this. Um, and then go ahead and get further instruction. If you hear room tone, that's a very, very important one. Uh, that means that audio is gonna go ahead and record uh, so that we can hear the ambience of the room to match it post, and nobody should be making a sound, freeze entirely in place. Uh, you'll also hear uh, call in for stand-in. Uh, you could certainly offer to be that most of the time on higher budget sets. Um, there are uh, specific people to do that. And so a stand-in is, uh, is going to be somebody taking the place of talent so that they can get the lights focused on them and um, things of that nature. Uh, Hollywood it. Hollywood it is a term you might hear in the grip and electrical department. Uh, it could mean that while we're filming something, uh, someone's just holding it. We don't have a stand. Um, it's easier to be held. It's a specific reflection we're going for. Uh, Hollywood it, it could also mean to just try it out. Uh, in that position while we're trying to figure out uh, the set. Uh, what is a shot? A shot doesn't mean someone, you know, is shooting somebody. Uh, a shot is, uh, you know, with a, a weapon of sorts, I should say. You could actually be shooting someone with the camera, uh, but a shot is referencing that the, the uh, camera is, is set for a, a specific lens to be somewhere, movement to be somewhere. That is the shot. Uh, also kind of going hand in hand with take, but a shot is uh, kind of referring to more of the technical aspects of the take. As I mentioned, the lens, um, the height of the camera, things of that nature. Roll it back or play it back is most often said for the director or the DP or the producer, they wanna see what that last take looked like. Um, if you can kind of see the, the, the monitor, great, but certainly keep in mind, don't go run, huddle behind it so that you can take a sneak peek uh, you may be blacking someone who's important, who does need to see that playback. Um, and then last, this is for picture. And that simply means that this take that we're about to go for is legit. Keep an ear out, keep an eye out. Uh, this is it, folks. We're, we're going hot. We're going live. We're going to roll this thing. So uh, I know that was quite a bit of information, and I didn't mean to uh, you know go over that too quickly. Uh, lose anybody, bore anybody make anybody tired, but uh, I did want to make sure that you were kind of aware of some of the uh, various definitions and terms that you'll hear on set. All right, and safety on set. So I'll go ahead and read this, um, but mistakes happen. Don't be afraid to let someone know what happened. There's always a way to take care of it, but good or bad, the production needs to know. If it helps, you can always start with, I'm sorry to say, as an icebreaker for delivering the news. Doesn't always have to be bad, um, but it is important to let people know that even if you didn't do it, you know, again, uh, if, if you happen, you know, nobody touched the, the light, but it wasn't maybe screwed tight and you saw it drop, go tell the appropriate department, let them know right away. Uh, if you are on that fire watch, as we mentioned earlier, uh, certainly try to use your walkie talkie to radio to get somebody to set, um, but don't go running off set to, to take care of it. That's not leaving the set safe. I'll make sure that you tell someone quickly to go get somebody else or pass along the information. Um, despite the fact that sets can get chaotic, um, they should never be unsafe. And you, you have just as much importance as a director or a producer when it comes to raising your concerns. 
Uh, if someone pro can't properly explain it, what they're doing, then it could be a safety concern that should get brought up the ranks to someone in charge. Um, and that is, in the case of Sarah Jones, it's a very famous story of a second AC, worked on a lot of high-end productions, who tragically was uh, killed on the train tracks uh, because nobody had ensured that day uh, that the trains weren't running and that it was safe to be on those tracks. And that's very unfortunate. And that is a situation where anyone, even a PA could have said, hey, shouldn't someone be down the tracks making sure nothing's coming? Or can I get verification that uh, we are in fact on tracks that aren't gonna be um, a set is safe. And if you don't feel it is, bring it up the ranks, get it in, uh, in charge. Um, even so far as to you know, say, maybe everybody's focused on a particular scene, uh, and uh, you're the only one that happens to catch a giant wire about to fall into the set, um, you know, you can certainly speak up. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure that safety is going to be much more important than you raise, you know, ruining the take uh, to let someone know that there's a big safety concern. Uh, and this is why safety should be your focus as well. That's why PAs are so important. Everybody's going to be very preoccupied on their department and what's going on. Uh, we need everybody to make sure a set is safe and fun. And, um, and so that's what a PA can be doing, primary focus. All right, last few couple of tips. Uh, if you have never heard of dress blacks, uh, essentially what many crews would like you to do when you come to set as a PA is to wear as much black as possible. Black shirt, no logos, no anything giving you away, black pants, black sneakers. Um, and the reason for that is so that you're not reflecting uh, into anything on set that we can see you in the background. It can happen quite often, but if you are in all black, it kind of helps out a lot, especially if you're working around cars. Um, a lot of times on movies, you could, you know, kind of funny see the crew working in reflections and things like that. Uh, as a personal thing that I had to learn the hard way, uh, wear comfortable shoes. Uh, don't wear flip flops. Don't wear uh, dress shoes, even though they may be all black. Wear comfortable shoes. Uh, keep a pen or a marker in your pocket. Um, you'll be surprised that while you may not need it, somebody on set's going to need it. Someone who probably should have had a pen like myself, uh, didn't have it with them. Uh, you could be doing a huge, uh, uh, help by doing that. Also stay hydrated. Uh, water is very important, especially if you live in the state of Florida, uh, do not be without water. Uh, and as mentioned before, there could be many crew, um, that are very, uh, you know, caught up in a task. It does not hurt to go over to them and just check and see if they've stayed hydrated and if you can bring them a water. Uh, keep an eye and an ear out. Um, don't actually keep an eye out, but you get what I mean there. Uh, it's very important to know kind of all of what's going on in your surroundings uh, to make sure that you, as well as others, are safe on set. Um, and last, how to find work. Uh, certainly, film festivals are, in my opinion, one of the great places to get uh, involved with fellow filmmakers um, and groups around town to start out as a PA to kind of get comfortable with it. Uh, there's certainly job boards and everything that you can go to and, and try to apply for being a PA. Um, but in all honesty, uh, it, it is kind of a who you know uh, place. Uh, productions are all about that. They're very much like families. And so uh, starting on those indie low budget productions can very well lead to meeting somebody in a, in a better situation that can then lead to, um, you know, a, a paid gig down the road or another production. So moving to uh, what I believe is the last slide here is just my information. Uh, if you have any further questions or would like to reach out, please feel free to do so. Um, and uh, I will now go ahead and uh, open up for questions. And I'll actually start here real quick by um, leaving this on and bringing my chat over here. Uh, to see which ones have been posted here that I can get to. All right, so bear with me real quick. I'm just double checking. I don't miss any questions here. All right, what is the best way to become a PA? All right, so this was a question that I saw. Um, hopefully I answered it if I didn't. Uh, certainly resend maybe a little bit more specifically on how I can answer that for you. Uh, do so again, I'll make sure I, I definitely answer it. Hey, Graham, this is Danielle. Hey. Um, so um, I think that was Kendrick. I don't know, is Kendrick still on? Maybe you could clarify. 
what you're looking for with your question a little bit, you can unmute. I see he's still on. Maybe you can um, kind of talk about some different ways that people can actually get started. Um, I can certainly do that. Uh, so certainly, as I mentioned, uh, film festivals are a great place to get started to meet people. Um, you can jump on social media and constantly be scouring the website. Um, I know that Craigslist is an option. It's been a tool, but just be careful uh, with anything that you find on the internet, that it is something that's not going to take advantage of you. And then it's a safe space. Usually groups and pages that are online can be very safe. Uh, if it's been around and well-established for a while, you'll easily see criticism if, if there's ever been an issue there. Um, there are several websites that you can go to to see job postings. Uh, Production Hub, I know, is one that's local. Um, and also, I know, depending on where you live, uh, there may even be production studios that you can go to uh, and ask to be a PA on uh, productions in the future. So, um, all right. So the next question I see here is I've seen many PAs bring their own belt of gaffer's tape. Is that normal? Um, yes and no. Uh, usually that is a production cost that is on higher end productions. Uh, something that the crew will take care of, in which case you don't really need to bring your own because they're not uh, going to necessarily, uh, you know, pay you back if you use your own tape on a higher end production. However, on smaller independent lower end productions, if you end up bringing your gaff tape, they will use it, use it as well, may or may not, uh, you know, kind of refund you for that, uh, but it's not out of the ordinary for a PA to bring some, some equipment to try to help out some of the lower end productions. Um, what does flip the world on set mean? All right, uh, so flip the world uh, where we're flipping around simply means that if the camera is facing, um, you know, let's say if uh, give you a box here, this is wall A, wall B, wall C, wall D, that if we're looking at uh, the wall A behind the subjects over here, flipping uh, around is essentially meaning that we're gonna see this wall instead now. Um, again, every I know every set's, uh, different. So if you've heard other things, definitely let me know. But um, if I heard that on set, that is what I would associate it to mean. Uh, yes, I'm also going to bring something up that's not a question, but OSHA is must wear closed toed shoes. So again, going back to that, um, what shoes do you recommend? Uh, you know, go to a go to a good shoe store and find what's a good uh, shoe for standing or running or walking. Something that's got a nice amount of padding that'll last you through a day. And believe it or not, I've gotten those um, uh, foam soled shoes, and you can do a lot of standing and things like that. Those things can get stiff as a board, uh, sweating all day at the end of the day. So just whatever you do, invest in a shoe that that potentially you could be standing in for up to twelve hours. So. Um, getting a lot of what type of shoes would you recommend? Hopefully I answered that. Uh, do I ever work on student films? I do, and I have. Um, it's as a great place to start out, and especially Florida's got a lot of uh, schools. Uh, it's another great place to start out trying to be a PA. Sometimes they may let you on, sometimes they may not, as it is an opportunity for their students, but certainly doesn't hurt to go ask. Um, I see our PA opportunities more difficult to find based on geographic location. Uh, for example, the midwave, cough, cough, sob. Um, it depends. Um, you know, if you're thinking on the higher end, big budget productions, yes, we're all familiar with the many cities that have a lot of uh, work coming through. That doesn't mean to say that you can't be a PA in the Midwest. There's a lot of independent uh, films that go on, but very well could use one. Uh, what are the best film festivals you recommend for students? Local ones. Um, so I mean that quite seriously. Find your local film fests. Uh, they typically can be a great place to actually get out, to see the films. Local ones uh, are perfect to start. Um, no need to go broke trying to get into Sundance. Um, When is it appropriate for PAs to speak out? Uh, as mentioned, anytime there's a safety concern. Um, 
I don't know if there's an example that you have in mind in which uh, you're, you're wondering whether or not that was a situation a PA could speak out on, but um, most of the time, uh, if, the, if the take isn't live, you're not rolling on it, uh, you can always mention something to whoever is uh, in that hierarchy above you, um, but certainly when there's a safety concern, uh, do speak out. Would it be considered inappropriate to ask for a specific task, such as uh, a slate, a bounce, a light? That is a great question. Um, so it's kind of a two-parter. On bigger end productions, uh, certainly ones with budgets, um, be mindful of, of who you're asking and how you're asking. Um, if you end up hearing no, uh, it's nothing personal. Uh, doing the slate, well, many a times a PA can do on an independent smaller end production, uh, and that does happen quite a bit. Uh, doing a slate on a, a larger end production actually goes uh, to the role of the second AC. Um, so that is actually something that would be defined by a very specific task. Um, oh. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being patient, trying to figure out some dinner. Um, all right, hold a bounce. Uh, same thing. Uh, it's part of lighting department. Really, uh, it's it's such a tough place to kind of draw a line in the sand as to what um, belongs to the role of a grip and electric and a PA on a smaller end production. Certainly, again, when you hit anything with a budget. Um, that's not a PA's responsibility, that is grip and electric. So unless you're asked to do so, uh, don't assume that's your role. Um, you can certainly ask to help, but maybe bring that up to the first AD or again, hierarchy where uh, you're supposed to report to to find out whether this is that kind of set. You can always do that in the beginning of the day um, to kind of figure out you know, what in what capacity they're planning on using you. But really, um, you know, you, again, and I, I said this in the beginning again, but you, you're an assistant. So you don't necessarily have any specific responsibilities going in uh, as a PA, except to find out what in the moment is needed and then go serve that immediate need or role. Um, there's nothing tasked to you like, uh, you know, holding a bounce um, or anything like that. Uh, what time should PA show up to work? Uh, when your call time uh, indicates, and there's also kind of a rule of thumb that goes into that, uh, if you show up early, or earlier than your call time, usually by, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, then you're on time, you know, don't go show up two hours before that time, nobody will probably be there. Um, but but certainly 15 minutes before, five minutes before, uh, you're on time. If you show up on time, if, if uh, the call sheet says to be there at 11am, and you show up at 11am, you're late. Uh, and if you show up at 1101, um, you're fired, uh, it's, it's kind of the saying, but um, no, it just, it, it means you're late. Um, and, you know, there's always the debate on uh, sets being run like the military versus having an enjoyable set. But regardless of how those sets are running, uh, don't, don't be wandering onto a set late. Um, you know, get, get there, you know, early. Um, it'll make it enjoyable for you. Um, give you a chance to maybe even use the restroom before the day gets hectic. Uh, what is a good rate for a PA to ask for? That is a great question. Um, it always can vary based on the, the production uh, itself, you know, if it's low production, no, you know, budget production, things like that. Um, but as far as the highest end I've, I've ever seen, and this is coming from LA, it's coming from local, I've never really seen a PA make more than $200 a day. Um, that's just kind of really that, that top of the line. Um, like I said, I, I lived in LA um, and I know that $200 a day is really top of the line uh, for a PA, even out there with the unions and everything like that. So um, hypothetically, let's say there's a bogey and no one notices it. Um, great opportunity for you to bring that up to the person above you, if that's the first AD. Um, and just say, hey, I noticed this. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that either got passed along. Um, you know, they very well may just look at you and be like, yeah, we know. And 
you know, don't bug, don't take it anywhere else. You've done your job. Um, <laughs> I've seen it happen where, you know, maybe it doesn't get to the right person and then they go, oh, we got to do it again. This was going on, but you know what? You did the best you could. Um, and that's all that can be asked of you. Um, do some small films allow for teens to be a part of the uh, PA as learning on the film? Um, again, independent, low budget, um, probably the easier once you get to the higher end paid position. Uh, think of it just like being a server. Um, there is gonna be age restrictions when you get into the legal aspects. Um, where you may or may not have to be a certain age to fill a position. So, Are a lot of PAs able to move into the AC positions eventually? Absolutely. Um, what I would say is uh, certainly don't do it on your first time being a PA. Learn the, the lay of the land, uh, you know, kind of get to a point where you could even be uh, noticed and recommended as the key PA. Uh, that means that you kind of delegate and are in charge of some of the other PAs on set. Uh, but certainly once you kind of build that good reputation as a PA, start working your way over to being a camera PA. Um, that's a great place for you to move on up to learn under those on the cam team uh, and eventually even ap start applying once you have the knowledge down for AC positions. Uh, keep in mind too, uh, by the way, that a second AC is typically the one that you'll see with a slate. The first AC is typically the one that you'll see pulling focus on a set. So just to give you a little bit of uh, further explanation, the definition to what the different ACs are. Uh, do you know most small to medium crews are open to volunteer PAs? Um, small to medium crews, again, it, it's, um, it's not always about the size of the crew so much as the budget for the production. Um, so depending on the, the budget is kind of what indicates whether you can volunteer on something or not. Um, if you have no experience, I don't think that's ever, even on a paid set, going to deter you from finding work. Um, just let them know, hey, you're a first time PA, you know, a, a PA is to be an assistant. Um, you, and this is kind of where I go back to don't be taken advantage of. Um, coming in as a PA, and I, I know it's going to be crazy to say, but um, nobody should really be expecting the world from you. You are there to learn. You are there to start out. Uh, you are an assistant. If someone asks, you're, you're there to do it. But don't be taken advantage of by uh, going on to a, a set where you go from being a PA to the gaffer in a single day, unless that's something that's kind of understandably known going into it. Hey, this is a very low, small pro project. You may be asked to be doing a couple extra things, but um, really, especially by the time you hit a budgeted production, um, yeah, I mean, being, being no experience is fine, but, but, uh, don't, don't be taken advantage of. There is someone supposed to be filling that job. So, uh, will there be a recording of this sent out? That is going to be a great question, uh, for Mrs. Bowman. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually already posted a response in there. Uh, we do put them on our website. So go to the chat. We've got our link to our website in there. I think Lenny put one on there as well. So we do record them all. Awesome. Uh, and can you define starting pay for union versus non-union shoots? Um, I, I really can't. Uh, and the reason for that is um, that line gets crossed often um, where you may very well have a non-union shoot that pays just as much as union uh, as starting pay. Um, certainly, you know, when you're going to take a gig, negotiate those rates ahead of time. Be, be mindful of the fact that you're probably not going to get more than $200 a day. That's really the limit. But um, yeah, br bring that up. Uh, negotiate. If you feel like, um, you know, you can't do it for less than $100 a day, say something so you don't get stuck agreeing to being on a production and, um, you know, they're, they're offering you $25 for the day. It's like, well, it's not something that you personally can take on. Um, so don't, don't say that. Um, but most of the time, if it's even a very low budget production, um, keep in mind, you know, they are going to be feeding you, you know, there are going to be expenses paid. Um, if it's a matter of travel, again, bring it up in, in you know, the beginning of uh, the hiring process. But um, uh, also keep in mind that um, some, some productions will pay the uh, fees to you after an invoice and things like that. So if it is delayed, that can happen, but don't get taken advantage of. If someone does say they're going to pay you, um, don't let them not pay you. Uh, make sure that's very clear up front. And it doesn't matter even if it's a no budget production, you can always send them an invoice up front. You can always make sure that you, you do what you can do to um, 
get that over to them in an email. Uh, get it on record. Um, let's see. Will most people be PA to then move to a higher position, or is there a lot of people that do PA for a living for a long time career? Um, I've met quite a number of PAs who are all looking for it to be entry level and move up. However, in the larger cities and on the larger end productions, it's not uncommon for people to specifically aim to be key PAs or PAs professionally as their long-term career. Um, many a times you'll find people that do it professionally or do it as day players. They can make a lot of money coming in on a set that really needs an extra PA and they can you know, do great there. But um, yeah, it's, I'd say there's definitely a lot of uh, times, especially in Florida, where if you're meeting a PA, their aspirations are to, to do something uh, you know, more than that. Um, and it's certainly not uh, a bad place to start have a great relationship with your first AD, know that you can be dependable. Um, and if they know you really well, uh, in my personal experience, they'll introduce you to the right people. And they'll certainly try to get you if you want to be a camera PA around the camera team as often as possible, um, and things of that nature. But mind you, uh, if you are the camera PA, and somebody comes up to you and asks you, you know, to do a PA responsibility, um, you, you can go do that. You're not only restricted to being the camera PA. Uh, and furthermore, uh, it's important to let that team know that if you are in a specific department uh, that a favor has been asked for you, you're going to go do that and you'll be right back. Communication is super, super key. Um, if somebody, you know, mid tasks asks you to do something, respectfully just say, hey, I'm in the middle of a task right now. As soon as I finish it up, I'm happy to get to yours. I just got to report back to my department, let them know what's going on. Um, really, I mean, one to two tasks at the time is, is very common. If, if you're getting pressed to do five, six, seven things at once, um, br bring that up to the first AD, get, get that over to the, the hierarchy period and, and get some help there. So um, what about scripty? Well, uh, scripty is a specific position, script supervisor. Uh, a PA on low end budget sets may be asked to do that, but certainly don't volunteer unless you know what you're doing for that position. That's a very, very important position that has to deal with continuity. Um, and so a PA is not going to be required to be a scripty unless established ahead of time. So if that's what you want to do, though, certainly ask to be the scripties PA or hang out with uh, wherever they're at. Uh, Uh, SAG posts rates on their site. Yes, they do. The unions will also tell you um, kind of the rates on the site. You can find a lot of that information Googling it online. Uh, yeah, just keep, um, you know, stay active. Uh, do as many projects as you can and build that IMDB up. Uh, certainly, you can always ask for a credit um, and get that going on as part of the deal for you coming on as a PA. Uh, mind you, though, that uh, a lot of times if you are uh, a PA on, say, like a commercial shoot, that might never get an IMDb credit, but it's certainly to keep in your back pocket. Um, I can tell you right now that, you know, I did a, uh, I was a PA with a great group of people on a, a production here recently. Um, and I didn't get an IMDb credit for that, but, uh, um, you know, I can express in, in the, you know, job searching process what kind of responsibilities I had and things like that to um, make sure I'm the right PA for the right production uh, accordingly. Uh, well, let's see here. Trying to get to all of you, I apologize. It looks like you've got 41 new messages, so I'm, I am trying to play catch up. General reasons to be union, non-union. Um, that's a tricky one. Um, in the bigger cities, unions can be a great ally. They can help you get work, things like that. Uh, Florida it is a right to work state. So being union here can actually prohibit you from getting jobs. Um, be non-union, I'd say when you can be, and certainly when you, when you find you can't really afford uh, to be non-union any longer, go ahead and, and as long as you've met the requirements, uh, get into those unions. <laughs> What was the funniest thing that has happened to a PA? Uh, that is a good question. I don't know what the funniest thing that has ever happened to a PA is. Um, 
man, what's the funniest thing that's ever happened to me as a PA? Um, I, I could tell you the first time I was ever a PA, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Uh, and I turned out I was at Whoopi Goldberg's house uh, and locking down the set there and uh, got in a great conversation with her family um, and only to be told later on they're not part of the production. So as friendly as they are, don't, don't get caught up in conversation with them. Uh, and they're not going to be instructing you on, on what to do here. Uh, when do PAs go to eat first, right? Um, not always. If you're certainly on a bigger budget production, talent eats first, followed by crew. Uh, you may be on Firewatch. Uh, if you are on Firewatch, then you will probably be asked to go grab a plate first uh, so that you can get back to set to ensure it's safety. But most often you're eating when crew's eating uh, and after the uh, key uh, members of the, the crew are eating. So. <laughs> Uh, great question, Bria. Everybody's loving that one. Uh, moving to Orlando and looking to get into 477. Is there a lot of work right now? Um, again, hopefully I can go back to that answering the question. I, I would, at least in the state of Florida, maybe unless you're really well established and you know those great contacts, not join a union just yet. So stay non-union. Lots more work for you there and paid. So um, that is, I believe, all the questions I see. I think I've gotten down to the bottom of the 47 uh, things here. Don't touch the lens cap. Yes, please don't. Um, please don't touch anything on the camera unless specifically asked to do so. And don't, if you hear someone ask for a lens, be the first to jump at passing the lens because um, as someone who has their own equipment, there is nothing more terrifying in the world than someone who has hands on your equipment that doesn't know what they're doing. Doesn't mean I'm, you know, I myself am uh, opposed to teaching someone how to do it because I'll totally do so. But um, yeah, don't don't assume that you can do it. You'll you'll give the crew a heart attack. All right. Any further questions? Any last questions? I know. Um, Mrs. Bowman said that you guys could maybe unmute yourself if there was uh, one at a time. She could maybe handle that and uh, yeah. ask. Absolutely. If anybody just has um, something off the cuff, you, you're welcome to unmute. And otherwise, we will be wrapping up. This has been really fantastic. Thank you so much, Graham. Absolutely. And again, you know, anything that I've uh, I've you know mentioned before. Uh, certainly, you know, you, you might run into someone says it's supposed to be done a certain way. Uh, a textbook might say it's done a certain way. I, again, I've been on multiple sets where things are, are handled different way. The best thing that you can do on every single set, super important as a PA, is to be aware of safety. Be aware of that. that that's for all sorts of productions. Yes. And I will also mention uh, the individuals that are hosting uh, this particular uh, class, the Orlando Independent Filmmakers Group. Definitely continue to follow them and check them out. Um, hopefully I got that right. <laughs> it's the Organization of Independent organization. Filmmakers. I'm sorry. As soon as I said that, I was like, I don't think I said that right. Um, well, I'm sure we'll get some links there below. I'm sorry. That's my mess up. They're uh, on there. Yep. Um, furthermore. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, there's, um, we have, we've covered um, quite a few topics uh, now on, on our different workshops and they're all on our uh, webpage. Um, you can also look us up on Facebook, um, Organization of Independent Filmmakers. Absolutely. Figure everybody had a first day, right? So. Yeah. There's also uh, another group I'll definitely throw out there and that is Women in Film and Television. Uh, that is a fantastic group here in Florida. Um, great networking I've, I've uh, made as being a part of the member and as a matter of fact, wearing their shirt. So I'll give a little shout out there. Uh, there's also um, Film Florida uh, and that is another group to definitely consider. They are the ones fighting for the tax incentives to return to us. All right, well, thank you everyone for, for joining and all the fantastic questions and Graham for your time. And everybody have a great night.